Today we are going to talk about algae. Algae is everywhere around us and affects us greatly on a daily basis. But before we get into all that, I want you to ask yourselves, what exactly is algae? Hey guys, I'm Jackson. And I'm Seth. And we are the Algae Bros. Now, I know at the beginning of the show I asked you exactly what algae is. Uh, most of you probably said it's just that disgusting green muck that floats around in ponds. But guess what? You're absolutely right. Really? Yeah. You see, there are thousands of different types of algae found almost everywhere on Earth. All the way from the thermal vents in the depths of the ocean to the freezing temperatures in the Antarctic and Arctic. That's cold. So, what exactly defines algae? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, okay, as it turns out, all the different types of algae are so diverse that the scientific community still can't agree on an official definition of algae. But I guess for today's purposes, algae is a simple non-flowering plant of a large group that includes seaweeds, as well as many single-celled organisms. Algae contains chlorophyll, but lacks true stems, roots, leaves, and vascular tissues of other plants. Seems like we've got a pretty good grip of what algae is now, right? Wrong! Wrong! You see, before I get into what algae is and what algae does and how it relates to us, first you need to know where algae comes from. And to do that, we're going to have to go back all the way to the creation of life on Earth. You see, 4.4 billion years ago, molten Earth cooled down a bit and the first seas formed. At this time, the seas in the atmosphere were full of chemicals and somehow the first life on Earth appeared. One of the first living things to show up 3.9 to 3.5 billion years ago in what we now call the Archean Eon were you guessed it, Archaea. Ah, oh, damn it, I knew it. And from 3.5 billion years ago to 2.1 billion years ago, these prokaryotes were all alone on Earth. So sad. Until something big changed. Finally. In a, in a geologically speaking, very short amount of time on Earth, the Earth's oxygen shot up from none to 10% of the entire atmosphere. All thanks to a new prokaryote that emerged around that time, cyanobacteria. Whoa. What made cyanobacteria unique is that they were the first creature that could make its own food using a new process called photosynthesis. Also the first creature to get the munchies. And if you remember the definition we gave at the beginning of the show, then you probably noticed that these ancient cyanobacteria are in fact algae. Whoa. Yeah. We're back to it, finally. This rise of the planet of the algae paved way for a new type of life to emerge. The eukaryotes. The, the eu... What? The eukaryotes. This includes all plants and animals. Are you calling me a eukaryote? Y yes, technically. I can dig it. So now we live in a world with many diverse plants and animals, and even many diverse forms of algae as well, thanks to those little cyanobacteria. And they still play an important role in many ecosystems today, including providing the foundation for the aquatic food chain, supporting all fisheries in the oceans and inland as well as producing about 70% of all the air we breathe. That's right, you thought it was all from the rainforest, but most of the air you're breathing right now is actually algae excrement. Are you telling me we breathe algae poop? Oh yeah. But that's all right, because algae are an important part of the human culture. For centuries, seaweed has been used as a fertilizer. Huh. Naturally growing seaweeds are an important source of food, especially in Asia. They provide many vitamins, including A, B1, B2, B6, niacin, and C, and are rich in iodine, potassium, iron, magnesium, and calcium. Pollutant control? Yeah, sewage can be treated with algae, reducing the usage of large amounts of toxic chemicals that would otherwise be needed. Now, while all of this sounds amazing, yeah. algae also has a bit of a dark side. What? Yeah, you see, algae oftentimes presents us with many problems that is not correctly dealt with and can be deadly. Finding solutions to algae-related problems is a challenge for the water industry. From the tastes and odors in our drinking water to harmful algal blooms of toxin-producing cyanobacteria, you see, an algal bloom is a rapid increase in the population of algae. Algal blooms may occur in fresh water as well as marine environments. Some blooms may be recognized by the discoloration of the water resulting from high density of pigmented cells. And of the thousands of different types of algae, only about 2% are considered harmful algal blooms. However, these few HAPs present many problems, producing toxins such as microcystins, saxitoxins, cylindrospermospin. Harmful algal blooms have been observed to cause adverse effects to a wide variety of aquatic organisms, most notably marine mammals, sea turtles, seabirds, and finfish, as well as us humans. 
Because if we eat these infected seafood, the neurotoxins can get into our bodies and possibly kill us. Turns out that this seafood goes into gas station sushi. The most obvious effects of HABs on marine wildlife are large-scale deaths associated with toxin-producing blooms. For example, a mass mortality event of 107 bottlenose dolphins occurred along the Florida Panhandle in the spring of 2004 due to the ingestion of contaminated menhandon with high levels of brevitoxin. Stupid dolphins. Manatee mortalities have also been attributed to the brevitoxins, but unlike dolphins, the main toxin vector was an endemic seagrass species, Telesia testundium. Come on, algae, how could you kill manatees? Yeah, why not kill more dolphins? Still don't see how this affects you? Well, just recently, in 2014, a blue-green algae caused a bloom in the western basin of Lake Erie, poisoning the Toledo, Ohio water system, leaving 500,000 people without clean drinking water. Yeah. No one is exactly sure what causes these large blooms, but their occurrences in most locations appear to be the result of natural processes that have been going on for billions of years. And that's on top of the million years that it was already going on. Million billion? Million. So clearly, these algal blooms are especially dangerous when they show up in, you know, the sources of our drinking water. Especially our drinking water. So what do we do when confronted with these algae? Well, luckily we have systems in place for that. Preventing algal prolification in drinking water is important. Thankfully, this is best accomplished by minimizing the input of nutrients that facilitate algal growth. It's common to add algicide, copper sulfate, to treat a bloom. You know, I actually use that algicide, copper sulfate, to treat my, uh, to treat my acne blooms. Really? Yeah, that it worked works. Out. It was very painful. However, it isn't advisable to add this to drinking water because when it kills off all the algae cells, it releases all the toxins into, you know, the water we were about to drink. That's where I messed up. That would require even more treatment of the water. Water treatment requires physical removal, chemical conversion, and often absorption. A well-operated conventional treatment plant with coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, and chlorine disinfectation can remove most of the algae cells, but Toxin removal requires some additional considerations. You have to treat your water right. You, you gotta, gotta treat it right. You gotta treat her with respect. You gotta let her know you love her. Most of us don't really think about how we get our water and the journey it takes from its original place to our faucets. And we also don't fully appreciate how rare and amazing that is. That's awesome. Yeah, like when I turn on my faucet, I'm not worried about dying from microcystins in the water. Also, we don't think about algae often, and we really should. It was one of the first life forms on Earth and is still the main building block upon which our entire ecosystem depends on. Yeah, when was the last time you thanked your algae? In some ways, algae provides us with everything from the air we breathe to the food we eat. Also, algae might very well be the solution to so many of the problems humans are facing today. Like dolphins. It can thrive off of our wastewater and even convert that into a usable and renewable source of energy. It was the first creature to ever harness the sun's energy and in doing so it changed everything and created the world that we live in today. That's right, algae is a poly. So for all that and more, we thank you, algae. And happy Algae Mother's Day. If you guys want to see us do another video on algae, then just tell us. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah, don't email us or any of that stuff. We don't want to be bothered with that. Come up to us in person. Find or, us. You know, in the comments. This is a modern day, dude. <laughs> I can't read. <laughs>